Okay, third time of trying this. I keep forgetting the tips. Um, this is Nick's top five low-tech tips for beating the surveillance state if you want to protect your identity, i.e. your face, your facial recognition, um, your iris scan, thumbprints, fingerprints. Oh, there's not much they can do about those. But believe me, these phones take our thumbprints all the time. They can take that print and put it at a crime scene and we'd literally not have a leg to stand on. But here are some low-tech tips to protect yourself because a lot of the stores in Australia that are wholly or in part owned by BlackRock, Vanguard and State Street have taken the decision upon themselves to erect a surveillance state while you're busy picking which bananas to buy and they simply didn't ask for permission. So here is how you decline permission. Number one, I don't take my smartphone with me when I'm out. I just use it as an iPad in the home. In other words, I record in my car, in my studio, in my dining room. But when I'm out, I take one of the non contract flip up phones uh, pay as you go phones for emergency calls and text messages and everyone that needs me has that so that I can't be geolocated, listened to or filmed by a smartphone. Tip number two in Nick's low tech survival advice, top five to survive the surveillance state. When I enter a store that is wholly or in part owned by BlackRock, Vanguard or State Street, I look like this. I don't care if it's raining, snowing, gales and black clouds outside. I wear my sunglasses in stores that I know have installed not only facial recognition software, but also iris scan software. There's nothing they can say to you. Uh, you could have a sight issue. You may look like a poser. It doesn't matter. That which is precious to you is being stolen without your permission. So when you're inside these wholly or in part owned by BlackRock and Vanguard or State Street stores, this is how I deal with the facial recognition part of the surveillance state that they've built in store. Let's imagine that this steering wheel is the iPad that is used when you're in the store and you're scanning your items. You will press for use card, use cash, and maybe use your store card. I would advise you don't use those anymore. They're profiling you. So there's a very simple and easy thing you can do to at least block the camera that you can see that is usually located at the center and the top. I take in with me a piece of cardboard and I place it over the camera before I step in front of the scanner and start scanning. If staff ask you if they can remove it, you can say no, I decline that you I decline permissions for you to film my face. There's absolutely nothing they can do about it. All right, three underway, going well. Okay, tip number four. And this is also when you're driving and you pull up at any traffic light junction in Australia that is now absolutely covered in the surveillance state. You may have noticed in recent years that all new vehicles are starting to look the same. They all look like bubble cars, I refer to them as. Now, I worked for a long time for a very well-known German car manufacturer, and it is literally by design that all new vehicles now have a long scooping windscreen. This was to assist the surveillance state filming inside your vehicle without your permission, without your permission. So there's a very simple, low-tech way to protect yourself. Of course, they have the legal right to film your registration number, but not your face. I drive like this all the time, but you could just use this tip when you're approaching traffic lights. I don't care if it's sunny, raining or snowing. I drive around, especially when approaching surveillance at traffic lights, with my sun visor down. There is no law to prevent you using your sun visor, even on a cloudy day. They are designed that you can still see to drive and they protect your facial identity from the surveillance state.
And tip number five, which is really two tips in one, it's a bonus tip, is to go to the office supply store and get one of those $2 rolls of coloured dots, sticky dots, that we used to put on files when it was humans doing the filing and not AI. When you're not using the camera in your phone, as I'm doing now, I suggest you do as I do and cover that camera that you can see with a little sticky dot. I realise they may be able to access cameras in other parts of the phone but I like to cover the camera that I can see and the second part of tip number five is that in Victoria Dan Andrews advised people to get those brackets for their smartphone brackets that attach to the vents inside your dashboard so that the phone is facing you at all times this means that they can not only geolocate you via your smartphone, but they can also use facial recognition just to double check it's you that is with that phone. I found that whole scenario bizarre because you're not supposed to use your phone at all when driving. So any smartphones in my vehicles are either in bags or in the glove compartment. If you use those brackets, you're never alone. Please share Nick's top five low-tech tips for surviving the surveillance state.